All right, my little art friends, welcome to your very first video tutorial. This is going to be a Photoshop tutorial, and we are going to create this angry pancake. Ooh, scary. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. The first thing you're going to need to do is go to the Art of South B, which is where you found this video tutorial. You're going to notice that there is image uh, pancake and there is image jaws. I want you to click on each of those, and when you do, you will see the image and you can just come over here and click on that and you will download it and it will go to your download folder. So go ahead and do that. Pause the video if you need to and then we'll catch up. Once you've done that, come over here, your start menu, and you're going to find Adobe Photoshop. Um, yours might say 2017. Uh, I think I have a newer version. I'm working from home this morning. And once you open up Photoshop, it will look something like this. You won't see these images. I've already started this tutorial and downloaded them. However, you will probably see an open button. So you can just start by opening the images you downloaded. If you go to your download folder, you will see your images in there. And I want you to open up uh, Pancakes. We'll start with Pancakes. And we're in Photoshop and we're, we're there. We're ready to go. Now, let me show you a few things about Photoshop. First of all, Photoshop is a roster based program. And that means that the images are made out of pixels. And pixels are simply little squares. And as I get closer, you can see the little squares. Now, sometimes it's also called um, DPI, dots per inch. So if you see something that says dot per inch, that means how many pixels across inside an inch an image is. The higher amount of pixels, the better quality. So a 300 DPI image would be higher quality than a 72, uh, which is what this is actually. So just so you know, we'll probably be talking more about that later. Now, to get into Photoshop, this is your toolbar with all your little happy tools. This is the Move tool, the top one, probably most important. Uh, the Move tool is important because you can't mess up the image too badly with the Move tool. I can a little bit. But uh, different than like if you're on the Paintbrush tool and you go to do something, and you're like, oh, man, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, I made a mistake. So if you're on the Move tool, you're usually pretty safe. Now, the top part up here are the attributes to all the tools. So, for example, this is a Paintbrush tool. And if I click on it, you'll notice that these are all attributes for the paintbrush. But if I click on the gradient tool, that changes. So that's just something to know. Back to my move tool. And all the way over here on the right, there are other windows that we will be talking about as we get into this. But the one I want you to know today is the layers palette. And you will notice right now that I have one layer open. It's called the background layer. It is locked. And it is the pancakes. So... The pancakes opened up and it took the full screen and I don't really like to work that way because later on we're going to open up that JAWS image and I'm going to want to put it next to our pancake image. So using your move tool, if you click on the bar up here where it says pancakes JPEG and you just hold the mouse down and drag it and then you let go, uh, it will put it into its own little separate window and this is just background over here. So I like to work that way uh, because then I can see other images, I can see my whole image here. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about that as we get into it. But let's just dive right in. This is our angry pancake, and this is his mouth. Now here's the deal. His mouth is closed. So the first thing we're going to want to do is open up this bad boy's mouth. So I'm going to show you a tool. It's under the top here under Filter. And if you click on Filter and you scroll down just a little bit, you will see Liquify. When I click on Liquify, it is going to open up our angry pancake here in its own little separate window, which might just take a second. There we go. And now you will notice there are new tools over here and new things over here. Now, there are several tools, and you can play around with these later when you have some free time. Um, they all do different things. But the ones that I'm interested in today is called the Bloat tool. It's the Blower Upper tool. It's the right below the Pucker tool, which is the opposite. Pucker makes it get smallified it, and Bloat tool makes it bigify it. So we're going to click on the bigify because we want to open up that mouth. Now, it is a brush, so you see a circle there. And that brush size can be changed. If I click over here and I go up, wow, that's a really big brush. And if I click over here and I drag it down, that's a really small brush. So I want to find a brush that's going to open up um, my mouth maybe a little bigger than that. So I'm at 107, let's say 125. And eh, I don't want to go too big, 144. Ah, that's nice. So now I've got a brush size of 144. Sometimes you have to play with that depending on the image to see what you want to get, but this is going to work for me. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to click right there in the center of that mouth and watch what happens. It starts to open up that mouth. 
And you can wiggle around a little bit. Now I let go of the mouse. When I hold the mouse down, it continues to bloat. And when I let go of the mouse, it stops. So you want to uh, hold it, maybe wiggle it a little bit so you can push it. And you're just trying to open up that mouth. So it looks like a pancake has a mouth and it's open. And it's a very happy pancake right now. We haven't made it angry. So that's up to you how big you want the mouth. Um, I don't recommend you go too big because then you can warpify it. But just keeping it uh, about that 144 size is going to be good. When you're done, what you got to do is come down here on the right and click OK. We're cool with it. And now you can see our mouth is open. Listen, if you ever make a mistake, you don't like the way it looks, on the keyboard, if you hold down Control, hold it with my pinky on my left hand, and, and hit Z, the letter Z as in Zonky, uh, it'll take away one step, one step backwards. And you can kind of toggle. I'll hit Control Z again. You'll see it's there, control Z, it goes away. So if you make a mistake, control Z, control Z. You can also go back to the edit tool up here and you can see step backwards and you can go back many times um, using alt control Z. But I just like to control Z, go back one time. All right, that's great. Look at that, wow, we could, we're done. No, just kidding, let's go get another, let's go get those jaws and open them up and put them in there. If you go to file and you go to open, it will open up the window that eventually because it's a little slow here there we go um, i'm going to go back to my download folder where i saw my jaws and i can just double click on that or hit open and it opens up my jaws now look what it did it opened it up inside right next to my pancake some people like to work this way uh, the reason is you can toggle back and forth uh, i can have my jaws and i can see them i can toggle my pancake but you can't see the whole thing i can drag it down here on the bottom uh, and there you go now i can do both and toggle but i don't like to work this way because I like to see the images next to each other. So since I have that move tool, I can just click on the word jaws here and just drag it with my mouse and let it go. And now my jaws are over here, my pancakes are over here, and we can work with both these together. What I wanna do is I wanna get this mouth and I wanna stick it in that hole right there. So how am I gonna get that mouse? Well, there's a lot of different ways, but right now today we're gonna to show you the lasso tool. There's three different types. <clears throat> Your basic lasso tool is the top one oh, click hold it down right there and all this does is you can just kind of draw a little circle around the mouth I'm not going I'm going pretty quick here but <clears throat> excuse me and now you can see it's selected it I can hit control C I come over here select my pancake tool and I can hit control V and it's gonna paste that mouth oh, see that's what happens to make a mistake control Z go back to move tool and it it puts that mouth right in there now, there are a couple other ways you could do it. I'm going to hit Control. I'm going back to my jaws here. I'm going to hit Control D. That's going to deselect it. Control on the keyboard, the letter D is in donkey. I go back to that lasso tool. You'll see there is a poly polygonal lasso tool. The way that one works is you click one time, and then you can drag your mouse around and decide where you want it to go the next time. And then you click again, and it'll stick. And you click again, and it'll stick. And so this way, click, 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 I'm going to get a series of... Uh, little cuts, click, 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 and when I get all the way back to the beginning and I click, uh, it forms that. And then a little more control that way, uh, control D. The last one is, uh, just so you know about it, the magnetic lasso tool, and then you just hold down the mouth, mouse, excuse me, and you drag it, and it automatically puts in those points. It works really good if you have like a two color image, like black and white, but when you have something complex like this, Oops, I messed up. It, it doesn't really know exactly where to go, so it's not going to work that well there. Look how that's terrible. Control D. That's all right. I've already got my selection over here. Now, one thing I don't like about this is this mouth is very hard edged. It's not soft. Um, and if I put it there, it's, it's just going to look really photoshopped. It looks cut and paste on there, and I don't like that. But there is a little trick you can do. Uh, when you're doing your selection, so I'm actually going to go back and reselect this again. Use my lasso tool. Uh, I'm going to just get my mouth. There we go. Oh, I did a great job. All right. So the selection is made. But instead of just copying and pasting like I did before, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to hit select. And under select, there is a folder modify. And under modify, there is the word feather. And if I click the word feather, it opens up this very small little dialog box. 
And this is talking about pixels again. So how many squares around that edge can I soften? So I can go kind of high, um, 17, and that would select like 17 pixels around it. Or I can go as low as I want. I guess I can do one and only select one pixel. But uh, for this demonstration, I'm going to do 10 because I tried it before and it worked pretty well. And I'm just going to show you what it does, and I think then you'll understand better. So I'm just going to do 10. I hit OK. And now look how it's kind of smoothed it out a little bit. You could, I don't know if you could see that before. Here you go, before. It's got the little point there. Control Z. I go back, and I can see how it smoothed it out. So now if I copy that, Control C, I come back over here to my pancake. I hit Control V, and I paste it in there. And my move tool is the second one. Now look. See, it's sort of soft. It's feathered. It's a little more natural when I put it in that circle. It's just going to be a little more natural. So <clears throat> um, one problem is I have too many mouths on my page right now, so i got to get rid of one of them. Let's look at that layers palette I was talking about before. you got your background layer still, and it's locked with your pancakes on it. You've got layer one, and if I click on it, you'll see that I can move that image there. And if I go to layer two, I move that. So it's always helpful if you go to the layer palette, for you want to move whichever layer you want to move, that you actually click on it in the layer palette. Um, with the new Photoshop, you can actually click on the image and it'll magically select it for it. Uh, that's great, but if you have a couple of images there, it's kind of safer just to make sure you've got the image. So there's a couple of ways I can get rid of this layer one. <clears throat> Number one is I can just turn it off. I can turn off the eyeball and look, it went away. But that doesn't make it really go away. That just hides it. Next thing I could do is I can delete it. There's a little garbage pail down here. I can delete that. I can come up to this little menu up here, and I can find Delete Layer, or I can actually right-click on it. Well, you might not be able to right-click. Let's just do that one. Okay, the little menu there. I'm going to delete that layer, and it asks me if I want to delete it. Yeah, sure. Goodbye, and it's gone. Great. Now I only have two layers. I got my mouth. So I get my move, my move tool, and I want to put my mouth right in the middle of that hole. Now, next problem, my mouth is too big. It doesn't fit. Uh, what to do, what to do. Hey, if you look under Edit, <clears throat> you're going to see something called Transform. And under Transform, there's a few things you can do. Scale, rotate, and a few other things we'll talk about later. Uh, and scale is really what we want to do, because scale means size, and we want to bring down the size. You can also hit, if you like the shortcuts, Control-T on the keyboard, as in transform, and that will put the transform box around it, but then again, edit, uh, transform or free transform will do the same thing. So there it is. Now, if I grab the corner and I just drag it down, it makes it small. But if I just drag the corner and I, make, I might mess up, oh, look, it's all, oh, that doesn't look good at all. What happened? Um, that's because it went out of proportion. If I want to keep it in proportion, I hold down the shift key on the keyboard with one hand, my left hand, and I just drag with my mouth, and then uh, I can make it smaller. Now, if I'm inside the box, when I have my tool, I can, I can drag the image around without messing it up. If I'm outside, it's going to rotate it. But if I'm inside, I can drag it around. So you kind of want to like smallify it, bigify it, um, and then get it to the size you know where it's going to look pretty good, like it's inside that hole we had before. It depends on you know, how much of the pancake around it you want to show, depending on how much feathering you did. Uh, this guy right here, this little dot, if you grab that by mistake, and you're trying to move it, and you're like, oh, I grabbed the little dot instead of moving it, that actually is where it rotates around from. It's like the center point. So if I'm out here and I start rotating, you see how it rotates nice right in the middle? But if I actually grab that by mistake and I pull it to the corner, it's going to use that as its center point. So, whoa. That's crazy. So if you do that by mistake, just move it back. Like you're like, oh, I want to move my mouth. Oh, I didn't move my mouth. Darn it. Put it back in the middle. You're good. All right, get it how you like it. Once you get it how you like it, all you got to do is hit Enter on the keyboard, and that's going to get rid of that uh, bounding box. And there you go. Look at that, Angry Pancakes. Now, one more thing. <clears throat> the pancake is kind of yellow and kind of really nice and saturated with its reds and oranges. Uh, and the mouth is sort of yucky, green, slimy, whatever. It would be nice <clears throat> if this was more yellow, maybe a little brighter. So what can we do about that? Well, if you go to Image and you go to Adjustments, you can go to a tool called U Saturation. And when you click U Saturation, it's going to open up another little window. And it's got your U and your saturation and also lightness and darkness. So what's U? U is the color. If I drag this, watch what happens in the mouth. Look, if I drag it all the way to the side, it turns blue. If I drag it all the other way, it turns blue. Right in the middle, it's sort of purpley. 
What I want to do is I want to kind of make it yellow, not green, but right before the green is sort of the yellowy pancake color. Um, it's not too big of a move, it's just a little move. Um, it's still a little green. You play around with it until you get it how you like it. Now, if I bump up the saturation, I think I'm going to see it better. Now, when I pull the saturation, oh, that's a little too much saturation. If I pull it the other way, it turns black and white. So I want to bump up the saturation, so I'm getting it to match that pancake color how I like it. And you just play around with it, get it how you like it. You know, don't have to copy me. If you like it saturated, do that. I don't care. It's your thing. Last but not least on the bottom, just so you know, you don't need to change anything with the lightness, but just so you know, if you pull it to the left, it makes it darker, and if you pull it to the right, it makes it lighter. So keeping it in the middle is probably where we want to be anyway. All right. Once you're done, you hit OK. And um, I didn't match that color very well at all, but that's all right. You'll do a better job. Uh, you want to save it. So this is the last and important thing you need to know, and then we're done. Uh, if you save it as... Um, if you save it as a Photoshop file, and I'm going to go to a Photoshop, I'm going to go to, excuse me, save, I'm going to do save as, um, and it will default to Photoshop. That is great because that means it saves it as a PSD. That means you can come back and you can edit this. The layers will still be intact. Everything you did will be there. However, to post something to Seesaw or just to save it to give to your friends, to send in a Snap, Facebook, Insta booger, whatever you want to do with it, you might want to change it to a JPEG. And when you do, I'm going to select JPEG there, Pancakes JPEG, um, I'm going to change the name because I already have a Pancakes JPEG in there, don't I? I'm going to change it to my Angry Pancake. And now when I save it, I'm going to save it, it's going to save as a JPEG and it's going to flatten those layers. So those layers are going to be gone. Now here's a little last option there. Um, it asks you how big you want it. You can actually make this file smaller. Um, and you can see it's only 71K. For some reason, if you were trying to make it really small, but the problem is if you make it smaller, it's going to look pixelated. So I'm just going to leave it large. It's 164K. That's not that big. Um, I'm just going to go with a standard whatever. Usually on this, I just hit OK, unless there's some reason I'm trying to, to make it smaller. But I'm just going to hit OK. And then that's going to save uh, into my, um, probably save it to my download folder, whoever decided to save it. And it's a JPEG. But this is still the Photoshop image, so I can still save this as a Photoshop and keep those layers. But if I don't, I just click out of it. It's going to ask me if I want to save it, because I can save it as a Photoshop. But I'm going to say no. I've got my JPEG. I'm happy. And I don't need my JAWS anymore either. I can close that. And basically, I can close Photoshop, and I am done. So I hope you had fun today, and you created an angry pancake. Um, and I'll see you next time.